Well, hello, everyone. This is the Chilling with the Villain podcast, the classic wrestling review podcast. But today, we're not going so classic. We're going a little bit more contemporary as we review the Royal Rumble 2024, just a few, less than a few days after the event. So this would be the most up-to-date show we've ever done, I think. Is that right, Sam? I would say so. I would say so. Buddy, big weekend. We had a new Tekken game come out and a Royal Rumble. Could that be the best weekend ever? It depends how you thought the Royal Rumble was, I guess, Mm. which we're about to reveal. And I also guess it depends on what you thought of the new Tekken 8. What did you think, Sam? It's so good. What did Uh, you think? mm Mm-hmm. Well I, well, I played against you for, what, maybe an hour or two? And, uh, well, it was very good fun. Really good fun. I wasn't so sure about the um, the Ultimate Pack being, what, $110, $120? Something like that, yeah. For a video it's game? Not... Nah. Or nah. Even 60 or 70 just for basic, huh? Well, you got the basic one, and it was $70. Yeah, pretty crazy. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. It 2024, is a lot of money. huh? Blimey. Yeah. All right. Should we just stop complaining? for five minutes and get into the pay-per-view well i just complain for the next hour oh yeah and then yeah (laughs) i know well spoilers perhaps all right is there any other housekeeping we should do well there was a little bit of news we don't have to dwell on it but obviously vince mcmahon right is out of the board of directors of tko uh not much to say there google it if you don't know what that's about who's who's in the borders now though in the borders who's in the board of directors i kind of put it in to one word Oh, okay. <laughs> who is? I don't know who it is. It'll be Nick Khan, right? He'll be. No, there. I'm talking about DJ. DJ. Dwayne Johnson, the most oh, electrifying man in sports entertainment. I guess he owns his own name now, right? If that's, that's the case. Yeah, that's what they said. When he owns the. Oh, really? They, yeah. They, it feels like the news should have gone the other way around. It should have been like Vince had left, then they announce, "Oh, the Rock's on the board of directors, and we've got Netflix." To soften too. it a bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah that is pretty crazy stuff should we just get straight into the straight into the show yeah you people want to hear what we have to say about the royal yeah. rumble 2024 so let's get straight into it no more vince mcmahon but speaking of legends with eclectic tastes the video package opens the show focusing on st pete's itself narrated by tampa's proudest son hulk hogan i kind of enjoyed this did you do WWE? they are I don't really watch the TV show very often, which I'm sure I've said on the podcast before, but I always enjoy watching the PLEs as they're called now. And the reason why I enjoy them so much, I think is because of things like this, like the WWE is just second to none in terms of these video packages they make and the production and everything else. And I thought this was uh, very, very good. And yes, how can you have a show in St. Pete's and not have, Hogan involved somehow. He's like the the mayor of St. Pete. So um, I've been to his store and restaurant once or twice. I just thought it was unfortunate that he wasn't in the Rumble. I'm assuming that he probably couldn't get over the top rope. So right, not going to blame him. But no, no, nice opening for the WWE. They're they're good at this kind of thing. They're good at building anticipation. Yeah, and maybe a little like, too good. Uh, yes, well. <laughs> that could be where they become unstuck, or at least with us, but we'll get to that later. Now, I liked how it was focused initially on St. Pete's, like the place it's going to be in, rather than like the Royal Rumble itself. I thought it was kind of cute. And then later on, you find out it was kind of, I guess, sponsored by like the St. Pete's Tourism Board or something, because there was another like ad for St. Pete's itself. I just thought the whole thing, it's like, hey, we're going to come to your town, city. We have this guy, Hulk Hogan. We've got this thing. Let's just all tie it all together. I just thought it was pretty sweet, pretty nice, pretty well done. Well, I, yeah. I would have thought they would have said it. They would have just said, oh, it's from Tampa, but they're really putting over St. Pete. But I mm-hmm. would have assumed it's like Tampa, Tampa, but no, it's yeah. proper St. Pete's speech. It's pretty legit St. Pete's. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like they wouldn't have used to have done that. So maybe it was because they were sponsored or some, whatever you said before. Yeah. Yeah. And I like St. Pete's. Good for St. Pete's. Yes. Okay, so why do we keep saying St. Pete's? Well, Tropicana Field, that's the stadium. St. Petersburg, Florida, January 27th, 2024. 48,044 in attendance, which they say is a Tropicana Field record. So that's pretty cool. 
Pat McAfee is back, fresh from a controversy, I guess. Something happened to him a few weeks ago, but maybe he's just back in general. I don't know, but it was good to see him back. So starting off strong, we got Hulk Hogan, we get St. Pete's, we love that place. We get Pat McAfee back. And then what we also love is they're not wasting time. They basically get straight into the first match, right? Which was the Women's Royal Rumble, where Bailey prevails and like i said they straight up don't mess around as the match starts with natalia and florida native naomi so that was a great way to start it off right yeah this rumble it started strong i felt and you know what like WWE are just they are just so clever at some things so they had trinity or what's her WWE name naomi naomi um returned to the company she just finished with tna literally like a few days ago and having her return they made sure she was number two. They wanted her an even number one or number two so she could do her big elaborate a- entrance with all the lights and everything else. And that's obviously a really big part of her act. Mm-hmm. And it would have been much harder to do that if she came out later. So I thought that was really smart. And it was a, a an exciting way to start the Rumble. It kind of like sets the standard for the Rumble. Okay, we're going to get surprises and everything else. Um, unfortunately, well, we did get another big surprise, actually. So I'm not going to say unfortunately but no i'm a big fan of i keep on to say calling her trinity <laughs> naomi and so i thought that oh, is a cool cool way to start the rumble yeah what is unfortunate is i feel like after this it kind of got dragged down and you know we've discussed this before the top girls in wwe are freaking awesome and they're superstars and i'm talking your, your charlotte's your Rhea Ripley's, mm-hmm. your Bianca's, uh, Sasha Banks was, but obviously she left. Is there anyone else I'm missing? Becky Lynch. Becky those Lynch. Girls, those girls are all awesome. And I feel like the ones below them are quite a lot below them, if that makes mm. sense. It, that That's just my opinion. Um, I mean, obviously you're not going to have a whole roster full of megastars. Right. <laughs> but, and obviously Charlotte's hurt right now. So that, that kind of hurts a little bit. And, Rhea, both Rhea and Io, both of them are awesome, but obviously both of them are champions, so they're not in the Rumble mm-hmm. either. Overall, I thought it was all right. I think the notable things in this Rumble, I mean, actually, we've got to talk about it now. Jordan Grace from TNA mm. Wrestling in the Royal Rumble. And, of course, I heard about this in the daytime. Nothing could just be a surprise anymore because everyone's... The, the sheets find out about it and they've got to report it. So they look like the most intelligent, which I understand, but I'm just like, oh, Matt, you know, because someone else is going to report it if they don't. But it is yeah. a shame that's how wrestling is now. Do you know what I mean? That we just can't yeah. have nice surprises. Because I think if I hadn't got the heads up, I would have been really been like, what the hell? What just happened? But it seems as if, as far as I'm aware, Jordan Grace is under TNA contract. She is the TNA Knockouts champion. And she came out with a belt and they referred to her as the TNA knockouts champion. And they were talking about TNA. And honestly, I thought this was a real surreal moment um, in the rumble, just in WWE as a whole. And I think I did hear maybe in the past week that WWE might be looking to do some kind of working relationship with TNA, which at first kind of surprised me, but then I thought about it more I think this is their attempt to kind of help TNA to kind of maybe rival AEW. I mean, mm-hmm. WWE did the same thing in the 90s when it was WWE uh, or WWF, WCW and ECW. WWE were helping out ECW a lot and they were subsidizing. They were actually paying ECW, even though it's been kind of debated. A bunch of people have confirmed that, you know, and obviously now with TKO and Triple H in charge, he seems a lot more open to, you know, break that forbidden door, work with other people, work with other companies. And I think that's, I, I don't know. I think that's pretty exciting for the wrestling world. And it definitely helped out with this Royal Rumble. And I'm sure for Jordan Grace, that mm. must, have, must have been just such an incredible crazy moment, moment for her. Do you know what I mean? I'm, she must have been like, whoa, this is is incredible. So, and they even had her do like a stare down with Naomi. Yeah. And I guess that was the feud in TNA. And like the people reacted to it. I was actually kind of surprised, especially due to the fact that they didn't really react to much else all night. Oh, well, we'll um, get to that. Yeah. We'll get to that. Um, some of my favorites, I really like Kyrie Sane. 
and she mm-hmm. did a cool spot, like a Kofi Kingston spot, where she was hanging on to the apron, which I thought was really cool. But she still got eliminated. So I thought that was kind of a waste. I was like, oh, why didn't she just, if she just got back in the ring, I think that would have been a really cool moment for the audience. One thing I noticed in this Rumble, I feel like everyone else doing these Royal Rumble reviews are completely different to ours. And that, like we point out things that no other review would point out. But did you notice how so many of the girls were wearing blue? Particularly blue and, and black. black. Blue and black gear. So many of them. Blue and black gear. I've got this in my notes. What's with <laughs> all the blue and black outfits? Did you everybody count how many wait for it? <laughs> What's with all the blue and black outfits? Everybody looked more like Sub Zero than Glacier. <laughs> Let me get my bit out. <laughs> yeah. And it, with, with, so at one point, there were five people in the ring during the Women's Royal Rumble who had blue and black outfits. I wondered if it was a thing, like a tribute. I don't know. And throughout the rest of the matches, uh, throughout, sorry, the rest of the night as well. A lot of blue and black. Uh, Mm, It's very strange. I was was thinking that like, oh, is this, is this like Tampa colors or something or St. Pete colors? Is it just coincidence? I don't know. Is blue and black just very in? I don't know. But um, no, who were the standouts for you in this rumble, Sam, or the standout moments? Well, Naomi coming back was a great surprise. I didn't know about, you said everybody and their mum knew, knew about um, Jordan Grace. I didn't. So that was a nice surprise. Well, no, no, everyone didn't know, but it got reported that day. Okay. Okay. So that was that was really cool. That was a complete surprise to me. What else? Oh, okay. So before the pay-per-view, I put out a little story, or you put out for me on um, Instagram, just to, just to give something my predictions of the Royal Rumble. And I said, Nia Jax. And then the moment we posted that, I said to you in private, I said, oh, damn, J- I bet Jay Cargill is going to come in. And if she does, she's 100% going to be the winner. So not only was I not right about Nia Jax, I was right that Jade Cargill came in, but she also didn't win. So I managed to be wrong twice in my prediction about the same match, which has got to be a terrible record. But uh, Jade, of course, was pretty cool. Well, it's funny because... I thought there was a very good chance that Bailey could win because I assumed that they, it seems like they've been building up uh, to the inevitable damage control split. So mm-hmm. an easy match for Mania would be Bailey against EO Sky. So I thought there was a good uh, possibility. But I also thought if they put Jade Cargill in the Rumble, which I thought they were going to do, I thought she's definitely going to win it, I guess, much like you. And I actually thought that was the most likely scenario. They're going to debut Jade and she's going to win. And... She debuted. I felt like she got an amazing reaction. She looked incredible. Mm-hmm. Quite a disappointment that she didn't win. Or do I you think, think it's the, the right thing. thing? No, I don't. Mm. When they I, had Bianca Belair and her facing off in the ring, actually, you commented on this to me. It's like, now that's a match we would want to see, right? Absolutely. And mm. I think they, they, they often do these like stare offs and teases in the Rumble to try and like. Like foreshadow, like we'll try and see how the crowd reacts to it. See Mm. if it's a match the crowd would want to see. But I would just thought never in history has someone debuted and won the Royal Rumble or won the Royal Rumble in their debut. And I thought that would have been really, really freaking cool for Jay Cargill because it's almost like in her debut one night she'd be made. Do you know what I mean? Like no one could ever take that away from her. Like she debuted, you know, she won the Royal Rumble in her debut you that's massive and so the only sort of wrestler that could do that would have to be like you know the most complete amazing wrestler i don't think anyone yeah. else fits that other than jade so i don't know if it's a case of they don't think she's quite there yet to do a, a main event match at wrestlemania or a big title match at wrestlemania maybe i'm just looking too much into it um but i <sighs> Do you think it hurts her going in there and not winning? I guess they tried to keep her strong by having two people kind of dogpile on her to get her out, I suppose. But just if you mean like in the longer term or like generally, I think her winning her debut in the Royal Rumble, like you said, would have been terrific. So using that as like the metric, like the like standard. Right. Then yeah, totally. It could only hurt her. Yeah. So shame. Like, it was a shame, dude. I, obviously, the Royal Rumble. It, we watched the Rumble and we hope to have more answers in terms of what we think the WrestleMania match is going to be. And this year's WrestleMania matches have been really, really hard to predict. With you know the Rock coming back and, and Punk turning up and all this stuff. It looks like the girls' matches 
or the women's matches, it's going to be, I assume, Bailey and EO for EO's title, and then Becky Lynch and Rhea Ripley for Ripley's title. And both of those matches I'm pretty cool with, I think, because they've been building that story with damage control for a long time now. So, and I think the fans are going to really actually be behind Bailey, I think, because it happens when wrestlers are a company for a long time. They just build that equity with the audience, even if Mm -hmm. like, I think Bailey's still a heel, but they know she's a hard worker and she's been there for these years and she's never had a, a big title match at WrestleMania and the fans think she deserves that. So I can see them doing that. And I think in terms of with Becky and Rhea, it's like, they're two of the biggest star, like female stars in WWE. It can almost be like a passing of the torch moment from Becky to Rhea. I mean, I mean, maybe we'd have Rhea, uh, Becky beat Rhea WrestleMania. I don't know, but I think that would be a, a pretty big match. And I can imagine the actual program leading up to it with the promos and stuff being pretty entertaining. So I might be wrong about those matches. And I think if, in, if the rumble, if we had those two matches and we also had, Jade versus Bianca. That's some pretty strong women's matches for Mania, don't you think? So we've got to remember Mania's over two nights now as well. I think if you need to pad out two nights, there's some solid matches that you, within that, yeah. In I there, think they, they need two use. nights now because they've they, got so many stars now. They're like right, overloaded yeah. with stars. But yeah, but, overall, thinking about it overall, I like I felt like a lot of the times the rumble felt really slow and the crowd mm-hmm. seemed pretty dead. But we got the three <laughs> nice surprises. Um, and I guess Bailey win Bailey winning was a nice ish moment. So overall, I'd say thumbs in the middle. So I- ignoring who won, who lost, and all of that, just the general feel of the match, there was it I wasn't really into it. And you picked up straight away and I did. The crowd weren't super into it. And I wondered if the energy of the crowd was like making the whole thing feel not as exciting as it I was, wanna, or was I wanna, it their fault? Or the, or yeah, I want to hear from anyone that was at the show, because maybe yeah. it was the stadium. Like, this is weird, because I, I it sounded really, really quiet, and I wondered if it was if it was because it was a stadium, and, like, the sound's going up. But then you see, like, all the people in the front row just kind of sitting on their hands. They weren't doing anything. And that always seems to be the case with WWE shows. It's very strange. They stand for the next entrance. So during yes. the countdown, they'll stand. And the moment they come out, they just sit down. And yeah, they're on their they're they're sitting on their hands at best if they're not just on their phones. It was there was just a real lack of energy there. And it wasn't just during this match. It was throughout. And spoilers to the end. Like this, I would say that this event, like this pay-per-view, PLE, was better than what the wet, pathetic paper bag, paper bag that you'd call the St. Pete's crowd would make you believe, you know? <laughs> yeah, they, they deserved it louder. And I just... For sure. I can't get my head around it. And I don't know if it's a case of in the rumbles where the audience is just so conditioned now to like want to see who's coming out next, where like that's all they care about. So they're only really reacting to that. I don't know. I don't know. Don't know. It, Something was off though. Something yeah, was off. Yeah. And it, again, if you went to the show uh let us in right into us and let us know or let us know on the uh the instagram because we you know we're saying it was super quiet that's how it came across on tv but it could be a case of the people there in the building were going nuts and it just didn't translate through the tv so i'd love to know next match a fatal four-way which is kind of a strange thing to follow on from a royal rumble i kind of thought we've already had like a multi-person competition and now you have another one straight afterwards but we'll get into that so this one's a little bit, has a bit of a confusing backstory. It was between Randy Orton, Roman Reigns, AJ Styles, and LA Knight. Way back in 2022, Randy Orton was feuding with the Bloodline, and he went away, I think due to injury, and then he came back actually during Survivor Series War Games 2023, which we covered on the podcast. Go listen to that one. That was a good one. Around the same time, so Crown Jewel, the same month, November 2023, Roman Reigns defeated LA Knight to retain what they call, Marty, the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. But last week on the podcast, I thought undisputed meant the WCW Invasion belt at the same time. So I was kind of confused by that naming. They, yeah, so that was the undisputed WWE title. This is the, like, undisputed Universal WWE title because they... They basically did the same thing like 20 years later. So back then oh, okay. they, they they put the WCW and the WWE title together. Then Roman, he comes out with like 
he was coming out with three belts, I think, at one point, but he'd won both belts and then they like amalgamated they, it. Yeah, they put them together and he was a universal undisputed champ. Oh. I don't know. It's all very confusing. <laughs> I don't know. I just call it like the Raw champ and the SmackDown champ. I it's don't funny. Even know if that's right anymore. It's funny when the belts themselves have so much lore and backstory and drama to them as much as like the characters on the show. It's crazy. <laughs> But anyways, a, a couple of weeks later, AJ Styles attacked LA Knight after helping him and Randy Orton fend off the bloodline again. Uh, he AJ Styles attacked LA Knight. Do you know why? Because LA Knight took his spot during a match in first lane, which seems like a very weak reason to attack someone, if you ask me. Anyways, after Orton got upset about something too, don't even know what, friend and occasional lover of the show, Nick Aldis, SmackDown GM, tried to straighten things out with a triple threat between Knight, Styles, and Orton, okay? Are you keeping up with this? I am. The winner was supposed to face Roman Reigns for a for the championship at this Royal Rumble 2024, but the match was deemed like a no contest because guess what happened? The bloodline intervened. Can you believe it? Can I believe it? And yeah, they... The bloodline intervened and messed up Otis's plan. So Otis pivoted, and now what we're getting is a fatal four-way, which also includes Roman, who obviously won't be the loser in this match. What's <laughs> funny is I wrote that before even well, watching the show, right? It's kind of obvious who was going to win. You say that, but I guess their aim, they knew that nobody thought Roman's going to lose the belt at Royal Rumble, but... They made it a four-way, so then people thought, well, Roman could lose the belt without getting pinned. And I think a few people, I wasn't, I always thought Roman was going to win. I was like, he's not losing this belt anywhere other than WrestleMania. But a lot of people were thinking that he could lose here, so he could wrestle The Rock at WrestleMania, and then Cody can still wrestle whoever the champion is to finish his story, because we're still completely unsure about these WrestleMania matches. So, I think there was a bit of doubt in some people's minds, um, but for you and I, clearly not. It was clearly Roman Reigns is going to win this match. But I do think it's pretty cool the fact that the the Royal Rumble seemed very, you know, well, <laughs> maybe not watching it, but the advertising of it is like, oh, the Royal Rumble seemed like pretty star studded and like, oh, there's quite a lot of different people who could potentially win. Yet they still put like, three superstars, big superstars, big names challenging for the world title. And that is like, just watching this match, that was my first thought. Just just four superstars, do you know what I mean? Like LA Knight, he's just got so over. Mm-hmm. Randy Orton, just legend, looks more jacked and ridiculous than ever. Yeah. Um, AJ, just, you know, in ring, one of the greatest of all time. And then you've got Roman Reigns, who's just like an absolute superstar. That being said, this is a real, real real pet peeve of mine so they do this in WWE now i'm not sure when this started but now it's like oh if it's a three-way match triple threat or a four-way match that means it's no disqualification mm. and kind of like okay that kind of makes sense because you know if you disqualified one guy what happens to the others i understand that that being said i don't think that should mean that anyone can just come in the ring and start attacking the participants right. in the match, right? It should be right. a case of, so for example, in this match, Solo Sakoma came out and started beating everyone up. It should be the case of like, the should, referee should be coming down and security should be coming down yeah. to take him out. So like the idea is like, yeah, you won't get disqualified for this, but we're not going to allow it to happen. Do you know what I mean? That doesn't just doesn't make any sense. And if they are going to no, do it, doesn't. at least try and do it behind the referee's back. So he gets a little bit of heat. Do you know what I mean? Like it's again, the idea should be, okay, you won't get disqualified, but it does not mean you can do whatever you want. So then I think it was either Reigns or AJ. I think it was AJ got the steel chair out. In my opinion, the referee should have still been trying to take the chair away from AJ or stopping totally, him. Yeah. And it's like, if he doesn't, then why don't the guys all just come to the ring with weapons in the first place? It's like, if you're going to make it a hardcore match or no DQ, just make it a proper street fight then. Do you know what I mean? Or make it a hardcore match. Like, I just, I'm really not a big fan of this. Like, no disqualifications. Do whatever you want in these type of matches. I think it's kind of lazy, personally. And um, honestly, I feel like the finish might have killed the crowd a little bit because we've seen this so many times now with the bloodline. I, my fear 
is that the bloodline is kind of falling into the like NWO territory, just where it's like, uh, they always win and just beat up the baby faces. And it's always outside interference. That being said, the bloodline does have Paul Heyman, who's doing excellent work and Roman is doing excellent work and they're all playing their roles perfectly and, and very well. Overall, I thought unique, cool story, you know, having the fatal four way match. Um, but again, I don't know if it was the, the first match being a rumble crowd seemed pretty dead. And they also thought it was weird on this four way. Maybe they did. And I wasn't paying attention, but it felt like they should have had a moment in there where it really looked like LA Knight was going to win. And they didn't really have that at all. I almost thought it would have been cool to have like a dusty finish in this match. I mean, it would have really pissed the crowd off, but like where it looks like LA Knight won. It would have got me feeling something though. <laughs> right. LA Knight won, but then they, you know, reverse the decision or whatever yeah. it might have been. Um, just something to give us hope on LA Knight because now this would have been two title matches where he's not won the world title. It's kind of like, uh, you know, how long are the audience going to stay with him? Maybe, maybe that is the case. Maybe they keep him away from the title. So the crowd are always wanting him to do better. It might be the case of when he gets the title, they're not so into him. I don't know. Um, at the same time though, you know, what happens if you put gasoline on a fire? Like it gets bigger, right? Yeah. I thought that was kind of odd. The, uh, the stack of, gimmick that they've made a thing now i think it's kind of funny but i did think the three way or the three of them stacked up and aj trying to pin them was a little bit adventurous <laughs> it didn't really work um but yeah four superstars all incredible workers all big mm-hmm. superstars they did their job um it was a shame that the crowd didn't give them more noise I broadly agree with basically everything you've said and about the no disqualification thing, right? Mm. This match only exists because the bloodline has intervened twice before in this incredibly it convoluted killed the whole creative line. leading up to this. Exactly. Yes. So it's that's why I said, well, Roman Reigns is going to win because, hey, this isn't ha- they're going to sort this with a no disqualification match. Gee whiz, I wonder what's going to happen. Bloodline intervenes, Roman Reigns wins kind of getting a little bit tired of it now yeah it honestly it killed the creative leading into it do you know what i mean like like they made the four way because the bloodline kept interfering and then they just interfere again like it should have been if that that was the case it should have been like a steel cage match or something keep the bloodline out at this point do you know what i mean like yeah i kind of felt like it kind of crapped on the creative that done leading up to it yeah, and don't forget this. This was this started around like May 2022. Before, obviously, it took longer because Randy Orton got injured. But I mean, this whole storyline has been pretty, pretty. Oh no, set the, up for quite a while now. No, this bloodline thing's been going on for far longer than that. Well, you with mean, Randy Orton feuding with them. Oh, sorry, I, I thought you just meant bloodline full stop. No, no, Randy Orton mm. has been feuding with them right. since like mm. around May 2022, gotcha. and like it's all coming to a head in this match. Well, it's going to continue, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah I, a steel cage would have been the perfect kind of thing to just I, definitively let's sort this out. I feel like the original <laughs> plan was maybe Roman and Randy at the Rumble in a singles, but then they probably didn't want Randy to have to do a job like so close to him coming in. So they turned it into a four way. And also that way they wouldn't have to have LA Knight in the Rumble, which could potentially have the fans turn on the winner. Cody, I'm, I'm sure I'm not spoiling anything. So maybe they decided to do this four way instead. And they put AJ in there because he's a great worker and he could take the fall and it's not going to hurt him. But um, yeah. 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 Um, yeah I think, I think the crowd groaned at that run in. Oh, I did. <laughs> Isn't it crazy how LA Knight is over six feet tall and Randy Orton just makes him look like a child. Yeah. Orton he's is a just... beast, that guy. Yeah. Geez. Yeah. I want to be him. Oh yeah. Me too. I think we all do. <laughs> I didn't mind the match. I thought it was pretty good, but I just knew what was good. I was just pre-irked. I just knew going in, I'm going to be a little bit irked. But for what it was, like in, in ring, I, the Stackham thing was weird as well. Like you said, <laughs> the commentary goes, well, the referee can't count because both of, like it was Orton and Knight at that point, I think, shoulders was on the ground. Yet Knight wasn't being pinned by, like wasn't being pinned by him because he was clearly on top. So why would you ever even assume that he would be just because his shoulders were <laughs> on the ground? Right being pinned it just it was bizarre so that well, was and, and roman but... tried to land on top but then still have his shoulders <laughs> on the mat and his shoulders weren't on the mat like one shoulder maybe <laughs> yeah but i didn't mind it okay so another bit of backstory during crown jewel 2023 which was the same event that roman defeated knight in that we just talked about 
Logan Paul won the United States Championship. He announced that the challenger for the belt will be decided by an eight-man tournament, which was won by Canadian wrestler Kevin Owens, who you'd think would be ineligible for the United States Championship based on naturalization and citizenship. Citizenship? And citizenship grounds, but he isn't. This sets up the final match, well, not the final match, the next match of the night, where Logan retains his championship due to wild levels of pantomime that we will get into for sure. I like this match. It was very enjoyable. So I'm a massive, massive fan of Logan Paul. Mm -hmm. Um, Dude, obviously such a, just a complete, complete natural. It's like, unbelievable it's how nuts, isn't it? natural like i think he's more of a natural than he might not get as good as kurt angle but like i felt like he got great quicker than kurt angle like it still took angle you know maybe six months but it seems like logan paul has been like amazing since he's di- his first match you know what i mean it's, Isn't it's it crazy like- to look at him and like n- know that he hasn't been wrestling for 15 years or more. yes it's it's unbelievable it's really unbelievable. And I was expecting this to be a really good match because all of Logan Paul's matches have been awesome. And Kevin Owens is such, you know, he's a really great wrestler. Every Logan Paul match so far, the crowd has been going nuts. And I think a big part of that was that people aren't expecting Logan Paul to be that good. Or when he does something super athletic, the crowd's like, what? And they pop really hard. Dude, again, this this is going get going to be the theme for the whole night just how the crowd just seemed dead all night. I just don't understand it. And they seemed frustrating. It was really frustrating. And they seemed pretty dead. I thought for the majority of this, um, the finish I thought took a little while to get there, but basically one of Paul, uh, Logan Paul's, I don't know, um, entourage, whatever entourage came out or podcast guy or something. And the security trying to get him out. So they try and get him out, but they don't get the bloodline out earlier. But um, then Austin Fury and Grayson Waller come out. Yeah. I don't know if they're, I guess maybe they've been kind of feuding with Kevin as well. At first I thought, oh, are they going to like make a group with Logan Paul, which might actually be kind of cool. But they were distracted. And I guess it was Austin Fury passed the brass knucks to Logan Paul. And then they did this really cool spot, I thought at least, where Logan Paul threw the shot. Kevin Owens ducked it, had hold of his arm, but still where the referee couldn't see, took the, the brass knocks off, put them on, hit Logan Paul. The referee came down to count, and this was what the crowd actually came like right up for this. They actually did. They yeah. thought it was the finish. One, two, foot. He notices the knocks on Kevin. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was a brilliant moment. Mate. I was actually shocked that they went straight into the disqualification. It's really I funny know. how like don't believe the rules they just kind of like it all depends on the day and the week because a lot right. like like in original in the original wrestling rule book if there is such a thing that would be a disqualification if you're found with a um foreign object, foreign object yeah an international yeah. object then <laughs> you're you know you'd be disqualified but we've seen it for so long in wrestling where no people will come in with a chair but if they don't use it they don't get disqualified here they decided to disqualify Kevin Owens for it. So I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting the referee to catch it. And then Logan Paul steal the win on uh, Kevin uh, after that was something else. But no, I thought there was a creative finish. And of course, Kevin had to get his heat back. He beat up Logan Paul, gave him a power bomb through the announcer's table, which I'm sure the announcers, it's really annoying for them when their table gets smashed. I bet. I bet that's so frustrating, (laughs) (laughs) but um no, it was a it was a really good match, and I I if I was going to predict, I would probably think that they're leading to Logan Paul versus LA Knight at Mania for the US title, and I think if they do that, that would be another great match, and in particular a very very good build because both those guys are really really strong uh, on the microphone. So I think that would be like a natural idea for them to do plus i think they need to give the crowd a payoff with la Knight, and doesn't seem like they want to put the world title on him so can they at least have him beat like a viral superstar and with the united states championship i think that'd be a really nice moment for wrestlemania so that's what i'm hoping they do and that's what i'm thinking they're going to do 
but yeah, and with Kevin, I don't know. I'm sure he'll be at WrestleMania somehow. But yeah, it was uh and it was nice as well because when Logan Paul debuted in the company as a celebrity, like not wrestling, mm-hmm. the angle he did he got stunned by Kevin Owens, and that was what a couple of years ago, and they kind of played on that. So I thought they they played off on it well. Probably was the best match from an in-ring perspective. But again, gonna say it final time, story of the night. What's up with the crowd? Wake up. Wake up. The whole crowd were all low T. And Nick was there, right? They could do with legacy subs. They think. needed some legacy subs. No, they I needed they it. I think they needed Dude. some C4 Energy. Yeah, I know. The irony that the show was sponsored by C4 Energy. They should have been handing that shit out. Hey, promotional. Here you go, guys. <laughs> have, you had a, have you had a C4 Energy? I have. Dude, they for gave editing the this one day, yeah, they yeah, do, don't they? They work. Yeah. I I went for a, like a, a phase of having them before the gym. Now I actually have the C4 powder, which is even a little bit more extreme. But the energy drinks, they do these really cool flavors. They do like a Skittles flavor and a Starburst flavor, and I, they actually do like a WWE drink. Well, I I think it's just a C4 energy drink, but they've got the WWE logo on it. So mm. I did try one of them before, and it was it was very good. But uh, that feels like a pretty big sponsorship deal, i think c4 so for wb because those c4s are everywhere huh like yeah yeah and it seems like a natural kind of fit as well i think uh for wb yeah, i do but um yeah the audience they needed to like Ooh. you said hand that shit out wake up yes, said Pete. it's because everyone's been at the beach all day and they're all like yeah tired. All sunstroke and tired yeah. and now they got to sit through like four hours three of four hours yeah i think i, I get, get it. it they're all beach bums it. and they're like oh mm-hmm. i'm tired mm-hmm. <laughs> but guys if you haven't seen this like marty said wrestling history was made tonight okay wrestling broke new ground a wwe referee noticed something obvious and goes oh i better officiate on this one <laughs> we're 30 episodes in and this is the first time this is, i've ever seen this amazing so for that alone it was match of the night he's the mvp the referee the referee yeah <laughs> Okay, so it's time for the guys next, where Cody Rhodes comes out on top of the Men's Royal Rumble. And lovely start, number one and number two, Jay and Jimmy Uso. And hell yeah. And like, I think you messaged me, you said, well, something's the lines of, well, if this doesn't get the crowd up on their feet, you know, nothing will, or something's of those lines. But what a good way to start it off, I think, with those I- I thought that was a really good way to start because I believe they're on different shows now. And I guess Smackdown Jay, and Raw, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and Jay had left and Jay's mm-hmm. a baby face. Seems really over as a baby face. You gotta believe, dude. I know like we're just here predicting these WrestleMania matches, or at least I am. You gotta believe that's a, a WrestleMania match right there, huh? Jay versus Jimmy Those at WrestleMania. Two. That'd be awesome, wouldn't it? I think they have to do it. Yeah, I really do. I really like Jay Uso's entrance and the crowd did seem to get into that, I thought. <laughs> Um, a little yeah not as much as war games mm, maybe mm. not i i don't understand the yeet thing that's gone over my head i think um the audience we're we're far too old to understand that. <laughs> do you know who looks like he isn't far too old to understand that Go on. but is bobby lashley he looks younger than me for god's sakes man I looked it up and Bobby Lashley is going to be 48 this year in July. Jesus Christ. He looks <laughs> ridiculous. And not only does he look young still, but his physique is just hasn't it's changed. The same. It's yeah. just <laughs> unbelievable. Like bravo to Bobby Lashley. I think well done, gonna, Bobby Lashley. Lashley is going to end up falling into that like Steve Blackman slash Ken Shamrock kind of I was legend, just thinking you know? <laughs> that. Are we going to have to mention his physique every time he comes on? I think we will. He is. Um, you know what really confused me during this is it, maybe it was during the build-up videos, and I think they said it on commentary quite a, a lot, where they said this is Cody Rhodes' chance to be the first back-to-back winner in 26 years and my mind when it said 26 years i thought they were talking about hogan right because hogan won in like i don't know was it like 89 and 90 or 1991 or something maybe it's oh geez that's depressing and then, then i'm like then they're like oh it was um, stone cold steve austin because like the other person that did as well in the mid 90s was sean it's like stone cold steve austin so then i'm like hang on when Austin did it, it was 26 years ago. I was like, what the hell? But actually, 
it was strange because they were saying that Austin had won the back-to-back 26 years ago, which I don't think really makes sense because he won it in 98, 99, and 2001. So you would have thought they'd be going from the late 2001, right? But yeah. I guess they were going from 1998. Seemed kind of why, odd. Why huh? would you do that? Right? To make it sound like longer, I <laughs> to guess. To make it sound more, yeah. But they, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if you noticed that. The, the viewers can, if, I'm, if I've made a mistake, then okay. But to me, I'm pretty positive. They said numerous times, the last person to win back-to-back Rumbles was Stone Cold Steve Austin, and it was 26 years ago. And I was thinking 2001 wasn't 26 years ago. I mean, it's 23 years ago. Still a long time. But maybe they were just trying to, obviously knowing what we know now with Cody winning, maybe they were just trying to show that it was such a long time ago and such a hard thing to achieve maybe. Um, but yeah, the rumble dude, I think this has happened to me so many times. I always get excited to watch the Royal rumble and I always have my expectations high for what surprises they're going to have in the rumble. Mm. And when I say surprises, I want like cameo legends. Yes. And I feel like the last um, previous years, WWE just get, they don't, they give us surprises, but it's, it seems typically that it's either normally just like NXT guys or mm-hmm. maybe like a free agent. But I want like, you know, I was really hoping Xbox want, would be yeah. in this rumble. Right? I wanted Chris Masters. Well, I wanted because, Chris Masters. Well, they had Bobby Lashley and Carlito in the ring. I was like, you've got to complete it. Yeah, that would have been really cool. Wouldn't that yeah. have been amazing? Now, I, yeah, we were trying to think of the cameos or surprises, and you mentioned like Bron Breaker and stuff, and I don't actually count NXT people as like a surprise. Yeah. To me no, personally, right. they don't count. So I wouldn't even count him. Who did we have? So Andrade the came back. Is, which I did think was cool, but hmm. I think a lot of people kind of knew again. Um, okay. And he, he looked like a star in his entrance and stuff. And I, I thought that was... Pretty cool. You didn't think he was going to win it, obviously. And then the other surprise, I guess, was Pat McAfee. And oh, mate, it was when funny that because, happened. How yeah, great was that? That fell flat. Like, hard how great was the setup? The setup was <laughs> great. Like, oh, Pat McAfee, this is going to be interesting. That's hilarious. Yeah. So, for those who haven't watched a baby view, uh, Pat McAfee's music plays. He's announcing at the announcer's table. He gets up, takes his jacket off. Goes to climb in the ring, but in the ring, standing there is Omos and Bron Breaker. And he decides to climb back out the ring over the top rope to eliminate himself. Then he's like, no, no, no. Climbs back in. I was like, oh, okay. I'm glad they didn't do that spot. But then he climbed back out over the top rope and eliminate himself. So didn't do anything in the Royal Rumble whatsoever, which I was like, oh, that's a bit flat. And it would have made a lot more. Like, I get why they did it because he's not like a full time wrestler or whatnot. And he's an announcer. Um, that being said, he has been presented like a an evil level playing field wrestler, and he's not a heel; he's a big baby face. So I did think that was odd. And the worst thing about it was, I guess him doing that took up so much time. Where the eliminations of both Bron Breaker and Omos, which should have been a massive deal, were basically missed because they were happening on, I think it was JD McDonough's entrance. It was during someone's entrance they eliminated Bron yes, and yeah. Omos, and I was like. That's oh, that was such a waste. I saw Bron Breakers don through him out, but yeah, didn't even see it. It was ridiculous. Yeah, of all just, people. Just bad timing, just really bad timing. Someone that did have heat coming into the Rumble, I'd say biggest heat, for me at least, I thought was our boy Dominic Mysterio. I think that's really cool that they can depend on, you know, even with a dead crowd. Okay, we're going to send Dominic out there and the crowd's going to pick up a little bit at least. And dude, wasn't it funny? Like it seemed like both the top reactions of the night were for our truth coming out. Yeah. <laughs> right? And I actually thought that was th- this. I haven't really been watching uh, raw, but I've heard about what they're doing with the storylines. And I guess they're doing a, a story right now where our truth believes that he's in the, the uh, judgment day. And it was funny when he comes in and he's, he's trying to tag himself. Yeah. He, his, he won't come in until he's tagged in. And it's ludicrous. Uh, so silly and Dominic won't tag him in, but then he gets in a sleeper and he's like, Oh, I have to tag him in, I guess to help me. So that was really, really funny. And again, like I spoke about our truth before, just said like, it's really important to have those characters, those type of characters, because like I've said so many times, they love our truth because he can lose 
all the time. He could lose every match and the, he won't Wouldn't lose matter. any heat. The crowd no. still love him. And they did here. It almost seems like that maybe they're trying to do like a, a replicate the kind of Sami Zayn and Bloodline story with our truth and the Judgment Day, where maybe it might lead to a, a big WrestleMania match, even with like our truth versus, I guess, Priest or something. I don't know. I mean, that could be kind of interesting. I feel, I feel like they could build it up to be a really big deal. And, and WWE, they are like the, they are the best at that like storytelling yeah. and character development. So I could absolutely see them doing that. So yeah, th- then for me, I thought we're kind of like the biggest pops. It only really struck me during this match that this, I asked you this as well, and y- you seem to think it was that this is the first time punks actually had a match on either WWE sure. TV or pay-per-view. I know he had like uh, some house show matches and he wrestled Dominic Mysterio, uh, MSG. But as far as I know, he hasn't wrestled on Raw, has he? I don't know. Not as far as I know. No. So I don't know. It felt like maybe that should have been um, a bigger deal during this whole thing. Other moments in the Rumble that stood out? There was a nice little bits of characters sprinkled throughout because when our truth is out there, we the Miz was there at the same time. So we had little moments there. Gunther's coming into the Royal Rumble as, what's his name? Uh, Ludwig Kaiser. Ludwig Kaiser's like gets eliminated as Gunther's coming in, and Gunther's like mm-hmm. chewing him out on the entrance ramp as he goes in. Like that was nice, a little bit. So there was it had it had these little moments, and I so I really enjoyed those. I um, obviously like cowering and like doing all the dirty little plays, like all of it. That was nice. I felt like there was more of that. It was better executed than in the women's match. We did get obviously Naomi and Jordan. We talked about that, but that's the only bit I can. There's character there, was it? Like a little bit? Oh, sorry. I thought you just meant like, oh, sorry. No, no, no I'm right. talking about like little character moments, like yes. interactions that tell like a backstory, like hint to a backstory. Or, no, they did the something. Jade and Bianca thing. Yes, yes, yeah. If you yeah, count that. Right. I, I during the men's Royal Rumble, like it got to like entrant number 18 and I was thinking, okay, this Rumble has been slow so far. I hope they start to pick it up. Mm. And again, going to keep saying it. Why was the crowd so dead? They just... They they came, they st- they stand up for the entrances and then they're just bored waiting for the next entrance. Final four came down to Cody, CM Punk, Drew McIntyre, almost called yeah. him Galloway, and <laughs> Gunther. And these, I think, were like the four favorites to win the Rumble, or like the four right. most obvious. And but it's funny as well because when they, you know, I don't think they they'd built up. Gunfer, both Gunfer and Drew as potential winners, but I think everyone knew that neither of them were going to win. Like they're not going to main event WrestleMania for the world title, at least not yet. I think everyone knew that, but they were building them up like potential threats or winners. I thought that was a bit of a shame having them as the final four. I get why they did it, but I always quite like in the final four, they typically, or at least they used to, would have like three kind of legit main event is then someone you just weren't expecting. And that's actually a really good way to kind of push like a, a mid card talent to the next level. Like, Oh, we got to the final four or the final three of the Royal rumble. And yeah. last week we reviewed Royal rumble 2002 and they had Mr. Mr. Perfect. Perfect. Right. That was final, wonderful. Wasn't in it? In the final three. And I thought that was yeah. really, really cool. And I guess, I guess you kind of know they're not going to win it, but if you book it right, it's like, it's almost like, Oh, there's a chance like they could. Yeah. I, I do think this is one of the things I think is a bit of a shame about the Royal Rumble now. And I guess maybe it's not as there is two WrestleMania main events. So, but like the fact that the winner of the Royal Rumble gets the world title main event at WrestleMania, it kind of means that only a big main event could win the Royal Rumble, if that makes sense. We kind of discussed well, this before. Like, no mid card yeah. has ever won the Rumble. Do you no, know what I mean? no. But how cool would it have been if Dom won it? Like, that would have been mental, right? It would have been great. But then it's like, what, is he going to wrestle Roman Reigns at WrestleMania? Or, well, they'd have to know. do something. That's what I mean. Like, there's got to right. be some sort of. But I do how long think... has Royal Rumble been happening now? 30 years? Over some, 30 yeah, years? something like that. But I do and also it's... think, I do also think that when the Royal Rumble wins, they, the, 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 yeah, the Royal Rumble winner 
they need to like they can't like then later on like lose that number one contendership to someone else do you know what I mean which I think they've done in the past like whoever wins the Royal Rumble 100% should be guaranteed that main event title match at Mania do you know what I mean yes of course that's um, why you're in it right exactly they do this now with the Rumbles and I remember Shawn Michaels and Undertaker doing this in you know on Shawn Michaels second run but they did the same thing last year where they have the final two this year was Cody and Punk yeah. And they do kind of like a full match, um, you know, leading into the elimination. And it seemed like the crowd was actually more with Cody, I thought. Seems like the people do want Cody to finish the story. Mm-hmm. And, dude, it's really funny because before this, I was just like, I have no idea what they're going to do at Mania because it seems like they're absolutely – going to do Roman Reigns and The Rock at Mania, right? And I still think they're going to do that. But, and it would make sense. It would be like the greatest, biggest match in a, in a decade. And they had The Rock come out on SmackDown and essentially yeah. challenge Roman Reigns. Then The Rock was doing some media the other day and he was talking about it. Like, yeah, well, if I wrestled Roman at WrestleMania, it could be the biggest match of all time. So I don't understand why they would be teasing it so much if they weren't going to go to do it that seems bizarre a lot of people have suggested that maybe they're going to do it at the elimination chamber and i know elimination chamber is mm. in uh australia, australia this year and it's in a stadium so they're going to need something big to fill the stadium but i just can't imagine that the biggest match in a decade or however long and you know this whole story with the bloodline is gonna you know happen at anything again other than WrestleMania. So uh, really confused. So then when Cody won, because I was fully expecting Punk to win. Same. And so then Punk would either rest, and I thought it would be Punk versus Rollins. Then Rollins got hurt and they did the Cody and Punk promo on Raw last week. I was like, oh, it, to me, it seems like they're doing Cody and Punk and Roman and Rock. And I was completely cool with that. I was like, that to me is the best case scenario. Because we saw Cody wrestle Roman last year, and I just think I desperately want to see The Rock and Roman Reigns. Personally, I think that's just a spectacle. Do you know what I mean? Of course. I'm I'm up for that, bro. I I think, you know, the business that would do would probably be pretty insane. But our boy Cody went and did it, and he won it for the second Mm -hmm. year running, back-to-back winner. So, and I just don't think he's going to want to fight for any other title other than Roman's title. I just don't think Roman's losing it before Mania. I really, really doubt that they would have Roman do two nights, like one night with The Rock and one night with Cody, because that would really kind of take, both matches would kind of take away from each other. So I was hoping to get some answers from the Royal Rumble, and I'm actually left like even more confused. With more questions, <laughs> yeah. Which actually isn't a bad place no, to be. No, it's not a bad you know, it's a good, no. it's a good, yeah, yeah. It is, it is. It's a, it's good that we're asking questions and it's not so predictable. I was let down by this match because my expectation was too high. I wanted mm-hmm. X-Pac or I wanted Ken Shamrock. Mm-hmm. It didn't turn up. So to me, mm, wasn't the most exciting Royal Rumble. Like the set no. looks cool, the production is cool. To me, the the book is like, a little bit left to be. You decided. like the like the stats that they kept putting up on the side, like a running t- like running counter of. The, I thought that was really that, cool. That kind of stuff, sweet, isn't it? Yeah, I thought that was really cool. The fact they were putting up the amount of time that like the different wrestlers had been in the Rumble, I think that gives it some kind of credibility and yeah. just a different way of doing it. I thought it was really really cool. But overall, I just thought, uh, I mean, I guess it was nice to see Cody win again, but I think the the lack of surprises and, again, the crowd being dead, to me, just let this match down considerably. Before we rank these, you know your no disqualification for the triple threat or fatal four-way that irks you? Mm -hmm. I've got a little irk. Royal Rumble irk. Go on. When they have a wide shot that has the superstar and the WrestleMania logo on the roof, on the ceiling, and they stop and point at the WrestleMania logo like, that's my destiny. That's very tired, right? 
especially kind of sick of that especially during the rumble match when it's like stop you should, you should <laughs> stop like not looking at you know and just stop the match to point at the side yeah i'm kind of over it i get why they do it but yeah <laughs> it's crazy. imagine if you really need toilet roll right and you go to walmart and you stop in the parking lot and you point at walmart and you go that's my destination. <laughs> like you just don't stop. Like you yeah. just go to your, like, it's just a weird thing and it's just not natural. And I know we're talking about pro wrestling, but that's kind of like a trope. That trope's kind of tired now. Yeah. They do it well, every year. It's the them. same thing. Like in the rumble, when someone eliminates someone and then they stand there, like talk, like giving Going, them a stick. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Or stand there staring at them for ages with like, you know, their back <laughs> turned to all the rest of standing in front of the ropes where they could easily get eliminated. So, um, yeah. What, what did you think overall of the rumble? The men's? Yes. Or the paper? The, so the I like rumble. the little bits of, I like the little bits of character, like I mentioned. Same as you. Compl- maybe it's our fault, man. Maybe we just expect too much. Mm. But something just wasn't there, was it? That's how I felt. Yeah. That's when, how I felt. I like Andrade. I do. Mm-hmm. But if Me too. we're trying to think about it, and like if that's your kind of big cameo, well, I don't know, man. I don't know what to say. I think it's difficult. Like the expectation is always so high for WWE when, you know, the people on the internet are speculating, like, oh, maybe The Rock's going to turn up, or maybe Okada's going to turn up. Do you know what I mean? It's like, then it's or maybe Hogan's going to be in it or whatever, and then it's like it's almost like they can't live up to those expectations. Maybe. Well, I don't think it has to be that grandiose. Or no, that that's what I said. I'm happy with the legend. The legend can be host. Yeah, I mean, remember we talked about it while we were watching. Remember when Santino turned up in the Women's Royal Rumble? Mm-hmm. Dude, yeah. There you go. Simple. Yeah. Easy yeah. peasy. That was wonderful. That's when they had, such a memorable uh, Royal Rumble moment. They had a few years ago, they had Ivory turn up as right to censor Ivory. And I thought that was really mm-hmm. cool. That was really <laughs> cool. I mean, even for God's sake, Maven drop kicking the Undertaker. Yeah. Like even that, it doesn't even have to be a cameo. Just like I, something to, for us to talk about. I think there was uh, rumors about Maven maybe being in this Royal Rumble because I would have so, loved that because he's so hot on, on YouTube. YouTube. That would have been really smart, you know. That really smart, been really clever. Yeah. Would have been amazing. Something, you know. But we didn't get any of that. So, is that our fault? Maybe the crowd on top of that just compounded the issue for me. So I wasn't mad on it. I did prefer it to the women's. We should probably, um, let me just, there we go. So we're going to rank these. Now, Martin, yes. I've done a joint ranking, but I know eventually we're going to cover Royal, uh, Royal Rumble 2000. And I'm going to say that was the best Royal Rumble you've ever seen. <laughs> and you're going to be like, so we know we're going to fight sometime down the line. So I've also made a Marty's and Sam's, but they all happen to be the same at this point. So where would you put, women's first, where would you put the women's Royal Rumble? Uh, in between or above or below Royal Rumble 2002, which was just men's that year, and 1998, just men's? Honestly, uh, I quite like the 2002 Royal Rumble, I think. The 1998 one was like, uh, but (sighs) is it bad? I think the women's was not as good as either of those Rumbles, personally. You're putting it there, are you? I think so, yeah. I think so. It just, there wasn't really much. uh, It was... mm. Just, just go with your heart, man. Just go, like, which one did you enjoy it more? Was nice. or it was nice. The surprises in the Women's Rumble were cool, but I was just never really, the, other than those surprises, I was never really that excited in the Women's Rumble, I didn't feel. Okay. Where do you so, want to put it for you? So I'll put it underneath the 202 and 98. Wow. Okay. Uh, women's 2024. I'm kind of going two ways because generally I preferred 98, but I really like, like Naomi and Jordan were a complete surprise to me. Yeah. So like, and that, but that happened right at the start. So am I just thinking like of everything afterwards and kind of forgetting how excited was at that time? Yeah. It's fine. Great. <laughs> so maybe, you know, there was nothing to that level in 98, but overall 98 was better. So I'm really torn. I think I'm going to agree with you mm-hmm. now. Well, that's joint. Well, that's sorted. Now, what about, the men's Raw Rumble 2024. Uh, honestly, I felt like it was pretty much on par with the women's Rumble. Okay. 
I... Are we going to do that alphabetically? <laughs> we, we, we're not having any joint things. Do you want to put it below? Uh, or... uh, I'll, I'll give. I'll put it below because, I just because the women's had more surprises, I guess. Yeah, I kind of preferred it to ninety-eight. I think, I think oh, that's where me. I'm going to put mine. Yeah. Oh, like it's the problem is like these like we're saying I prefer nineteen eight, but honestly, like the women's twenty twenty four, the men's twenty twenty four, and Royal Rumble nineteen ninety eight didn't really do it for me. So we're not talking like <laughs> huge just because it's above ninety eight. It's not really saying anything. That's right. just how I feel. Right. So men's twenty twenty four. Oh god, that makes you know what? I'm putting it below because that makes the women's like the women's it just makes it look terrible. And it just it simply wasn't that men's. 2024 very nice so overall uh i guess i guess it doesn't matter nothing's really changed we'll just put the men's there shall we screw it there we go all we do know is no way with any of this is as good as 2002 still the chilling with the villain royal rumble gold standard but then again we've only reviewed three do you want a real? Do you want? You mentioned that the you preferred there wasn't enough surprises. Do you want a legit surprise? Go on. Straight after I put a poll out on Instagram asking for match of the night, the women's Royal Rumble is like the runaway. So how really? about that? And no one gave a crap about Logan Paul versus Kevin Owens. Mm-hmm. Like that is nuts, right? I think I thought, it's it's because of the the three big surprises. I think, yeah, you do. Yeah, you hmm. know what? As well, it's funny because like the the women's Royal Rumble when they started doing it, I think it was five or six years ago. Yeah, the first like handful of women's rumbles were all filled up with like uh, women legends, like legit. Oh, one we, of them, oh like, I bet you were in heaven. Like, like half the women in the rumble were like <laughs> like female legends you know yeah. they'd bring back trish and yeah Lita, michelle mccall and all these you know um and they didn't have any in this rumble i don't no. think huh yeah no. so they, they kind of used them all up obviously there's only so many female legends out there do you know what i mean um but no is, Natal- is natalia <laughs> still current yeah she's still on the roster yeah oh, okay okay yeah so i'm trying i'm trying to think would there have been any cool sort of female legends they could have used I feel like it would have been cool for them. I don't know if she still works for WWE, but Miko Sanamura, she's a Japanese women's wrestler that they used in NXT UK. Having her in the Rumble could have been something different. Um, it's it, it seems like Sasha Banks, I guess, isn't coming to WWE because it feels like, well, that would have been I'm not going to say that. I would have said they'd bring it back here, but then if they already had plans for Bailey to win, they wouldn't want Sasha to come back to just lose. So maybe there's a chance still she's coming to WWE. Uh, uh, online reports seem to suggest more likely AEW, but we shall see. Um, we shall. I'm, I'm trying to think if there's any actual sort of female legends that could have even been really possible for the Royal Rumble that haven't been done before as well. I don't know if All there right. is, you know. How about this? Go we on. had Santino enter the women's Royal Rumble once, right? Mm-hmm. Let's have Jacqueline enter the men's. Oh jeez, Jack. I mean, Jack. Disco I, Inferno. <laughs> but Jacqueline Disco. I feel like Jacqueline's already done one of these rumbles. I'm. Oh, has she? I would have probably I, would have I, done right. I would have thought so. I mean, she's in the okay. hall. She's in the hall. Of, she's in the hall of fame. So I assume so. But yeah, overall rating for the rumble, or I guess we should do favorite match first. Yeah. Um, favorite match is difficult. Uh, I think I'm gonna say maybe Kevin and Logan Paul, just because I enjoyed that finish. Yep. Match of the night for me was Logan Paul and Kevin Owens, and it wasn't difficult for right. me, at least. Worst uh, match at least, of the night? Mm. So the the fatal four-way was just what it was. We talked about that, and it was fine. Mm-hmm. It So it's going to be one of the rumbles. Doesn't that suck? But like, suck. which one? Like, which one? Well, I just said I preferred the women, so I guess I'm going to have to go with the men's rumble. Sounds good. All right, that's how we're gonna do it. Yeah, overall, again, like it's n- it wasn't as bad as we're probably making it sound. Mm. It, we're just talking about huge levels of disappointment compounded with just a dead crowd, which I don't think was the fault of the talent, especially like you said during that Logan Paul match and Kevin Owens. Those two guys were just like giving it their all, 
you know they were just going nuts on it and just there was just nothing nothing returned so don't know who to blame but something I, was off something I, was amiss if something was off, i feel like people are going to say they were ungrateful because they're going to say we got these surprises we got the debut of jade we got a tna wrestler in there we got the return of naomi we got a free agent returning to andrade like what mm-hmm. do you guys expect we got to see bailey finally win a royal rumble Cody wins again. So I'm assuming that the audience probably enjoyed this rumble a lot more than we did because legit, I, you know, quickly looked at my phone and I've got messages from different fans saying they really, really enjoyed it. So people maybe, have really liked it. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I guess for me, I mean, you're not, this doesn't really make sense because you're not a performer or wrestler, but for me, I'm always listening to the crowd and, to me, it's all about the crowd. If the crowd, like the crowd will tell you if it's a good show or not. And if the crowd's going nuts, it's a good show. And if they're sat on their hands, it's not. And bro, yeah. there's a point where Grayson Waller comes out with a microphone to his entrance. He's just like saying some crap. Yeah. Right? And the crowd was so silent. It was making him sound like he was dying on the mic. Like it was an open mic night and he's just some drunk guy. And like the crowd just wanted him gone. And it was just surreal. Dude, I did think about there was a lot of the guys that came out that were like Triple H rehires that just came out to silence. Like even, even Ricochet, I thought he, he came in pretty late. It sounded like almost silence when he came out, huh? And I feel like he normally gets a really decent re- reaction. So I just, something was odd in the air. I don't know. We've, we've, we've talked about this at Nauseam, but uh, yeah. Did anybody else feel this who was watching yeah. who wasn't there? I'd like right? to Did know. you feel like something was off when you were watching it? There was something going on, huh? I'm going to give the show overall. Um, I'm going to say the production was pretty and it looked nice. Was there was nothing wrong with the in-ring action. They gave us some surprises. Um, so I'm going to give it a, a, a thumbs in the middle, 2.5. Yep. I think if the Logan Paul and Kevin Owens match was any worse or it didn't, or if, even if perhaps it just didn't have the silliness at the end, like the pantomime, which I enjoyed, then I would have given it a two, but I think that's just enough to take it to 2.5 for me as yeah. well. In yeah. the middle, in the middle. Right, in the middle. So. And honestly, man, like that's not what I want from a Royal Rumble. I don't want it to be in the middle. I'd even prefer an insane trash one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like Royal Rumble 2000. <laughs> <laughs> It's like my favorite pay-per-view of all time. <laughs> totally, totally with you. Well, so, guys, I hope you enjoyed our very yeah. contemporary review. If you did, please give us a follow on our social media platforms, mm-hmm. the old TikTok, the YouTube, and the Instagram at the villain pod. And um, yeah, Sam, I guess your time to eliminate us, I guess. Oh, that was very good. Have you been cooking that up? No, I just thought of it on the spot, actually. Oh, it was very nice, sir. All right, well, (laughs) thank you guys for listening. Let us know what you thought. Yes. Who's to blame? Maybe we're to blame. Maybe (laughs) everyone's to blame, but something was a little bit amiss. It was our expectations, we expect. That's good for WWE to be in a position where just like people expect so much from you every time. That's a good place to be, you know. That's true. Uh, We'll see. Anyways, thanks again, guys. Have a good week. Till next week.